December 2020. The Steam Winter Sale was live, and having just played through Cyberpunk 2077, I was itching for a new role-playing game to experience. I eventually stumbled upon a little game by the name of Nier Automata, a Japanese role-playing game published by Square Enix and developed by Platinum Games, with this crazy man as the creative director. <laughs> I had seen this game mentioned before many times, but really quickly dismissed it as this weird Japanese RPG with an aesthetic that just was quite off-putting to me. That being said, for whatever strange reason that uh, compelled me that day, I made the decision to purchase Nier Automata and quickly launched it. Nier Automata has an impressively unique approach to gameplay. It seamlessly transitions between third-person action RPG to a side-scroller to a twin-stick shooter to these 8-bit bullet hell hacking sequences, all of which are incredibly responsive and greatly executed. None of them overstay their welcome, and this very gameplay never feels like a gimmick for the sake of just being there. The majority of this game, the action RPG element, is the smooth, flashy character action combat Platinum Games is beloved for. Think Devil May Cry or Bayonetta. It's deceptively simple at first, but skillful combos open up opportunities far beyond anything I've been able to achieve myself. The skill floor is low, while the skill ceiling is massive, and it's a joy to play at either end of the spectrum. I don't even know if I have to say anything about the music, it speaks for itself. Kaichi Okabe has composed a brilliant soundtrack that encompasses the raw emotions you'll feel while playing this game. And trust me, there's a lot. I'm probably more emotionally invested in these androids than I am to most humans in areas I've experienced. The entirety of the OSD conveys a range of emotions unlike anything I've experienced in any game before. The first time I touched down in the service and heard rays of light playing through my headphones, I just felt goosebumps crawl all up my arm and this experience was replicated not once, not twice, but dozens of times throughout this game. And remember its varied gameplay? The musical arrangement transitions alongside it, completely transforming at times to an 8-bit version, for instance, when hacking. describe how ethereal and beautiful this music feels. Despite being quite different games, I've heard Nier Automata's approach to world design like it to that of the original Dark Souls. Like in the original Dark Souls, it's a sort of semi-open world where there's a great deal of environments for you to explore but a sense of home and of memories. In Dark Souls, you have your main area, you have your hub area, you have Firelink Shrine. From Firelink Shrine, you can go to the Catacombs, you can go to the Undead Parish, you have all of these other areas that all connect from Firelink Shrine, and you always find your way back. You find, you'll find you pull a lever and you'll find an elevator that pulls you all the way back to Firelink Shrine. It gives you the sense of home, of belonging, of this place that you can just come back to and just exist in this world. In Nier Automata, every area is like that. Where Dark Souls has Firelink Shrine, Nier has the desert area, the city ruins, the resistance camp, an amusement park, the forest, and so much more. These places all change throughout the game, completely transforming as a result of events that take place in the narrative, as you constantly return and find these new elements coinciding alongside the story. It's just a complete joy to experience, it gives you a sense of belonging in an actual place that you can return to and explore and love. Yoko Taro, the creative director of the Nier and Drakengard series, has often emphasized the emotional core in storytelling, whereas a typical game director would typically start with a plot that they wish to convey, with the beginning, ending, whatever sort of contrivances they think of to further the plot along as their sort of baseline brainstorming. Yoko Taro, instead of this, effectively starts with an emotion that he wants the player to experience and goes backwards from there. So he starts with this core and then develops the plot around that. This approach was a complete success. 
Automata tells an incredibly humanistic tale about well-developed characters, a unique approach to philosophical storytelling, and a riveting narrative. This isn't just your typical can androids be human story, but it's a deep dive into the human consciousness with tons of thought-provoking questions and just a riveting narrative that is elevated even further by the way in which it achieves one of my favorite things to talk about, Ludo Narrative Resonance. Ludo Narrative Resonance is basically this idea of a narrative being elevated even further by the gameplay itself. So like in a book, you really just have the text that you're reading. Elevating this to the medium of cinema, you then add cinematography and visuals, acting and music. But then, going one step further into the world of video games, you also transition into an interactive medium. Rather than passively consuming content, you are controlling a character that actually inhabits the story being portrayed. The idea of ludonarrative resonance is actually using this interactivity to significantly elevate the story above what it would be otherwise, using the medium of gaming to make a story better than it would be if it was represented as a novel. Nier isn't just a series of cutscenes intermixed with button mashing to kill enemies. All the gameplay genres that are used, fourth wall breaks, and so many other things I just can't mention without spoiling them, elevate the narrative so much further beyond just a good story. One of the ways that this is often mentioned is the multiple endings present, requiring you to replay the game multiple times to truly beat it. Obviously, I'm not going to mention what the endings actually consist of, what they entail, anything of that nature, due to this review being spoiler-free or as spoiler-free as I can make it, but I would not like to recontextualize them as acts, as opposed to endings. There are three acts, and both Act 1 and Act 3 are completely new content. Only Act 2 actually repeats any events, but it isn't just a repeat of Act 1. Everything it does is completely necessary for the narrative and not redundant whatsoever. Please do not be afraid of playing this game just because you have to beat it multiple times. I cannot emphasize this enough. You really just beat it once. Despite the extensive praise that Nier Automata has received, I still feel as if it is vastly underserved in how great of a game this truly is. From music to gameplay to the story, it's really just an unparalleled experience that everyone I feel should just play through at least once. Thank you for watching. Hey, hey,